When the critically acclaimed film A River Runs Through It was released in 1992, it drew thousands of tourists to Montana and helped rejuvenate local economies and waterways. It also introduced a whole new generation to the art of fly fishing. There. But the beauty and skill showcased so vividly in the movie isn't limited to Western states. And if you look hard enough, it can even be found in the heart of the Corn Belt. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Another brownie. It makes me feel like I'm in the mountains and I'm a long ways from work and everything else. And this is one of the prettiest places I fish. And I get here as often as I can. For Kleckner, who is president of the Driftless Chapter of Trout Unlimited, as well as a fishing guide and owner of the Decorah, Iowa-based Bear Creek Anglers, this is more than just another day wading in cold water. He knows each trout he catches and releases is there because a large number of people have been working together for more than 80 years. The trout come from two sources, the native populations that swim in North Bear Creek and others stocked by the Iowa Department of Natural Resources from the nearby Decorah Fish Hatchery. But preserving and expanding populations of brown, brook, and rainbow trout in northeastern Iowa is much more involved than simply restocking local streams. Trout thrive in fast-moving 50-degree water and need a gravel-covered stream bed to survive. The spring-fed creeks in northeastern Iowa are the perfect habitat for these fish. Rainbow and brook trout are native to the region, and brown trout were introduced in the 1880s. But as farming and industrialization grew, trout numbers began to decline. And in the 1930s, efforts to help bring back dwindling populations were started. Efforts have really kicked into high gear during the past two decades as a strong relationship between farmers, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and the Federal Natural Resources Conservation Service has been forged. Prior to his retiring from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, Bill Kalishek worked with farmers in the region to help restore trout streams for more than 25 years. My experience with farmers has been that most farmers want to do the right thing. They want to do what is correct for the resource and correct for the stream that flows through their property. Now, sometimes they aren't able to do the right thing because of economic or social issues that come into play. And then there is that small percentage that doesn't care about doing the right thing. And unfortunately, when you're talking about trout streams that have very small watersheds, just one or two really bad fields of high erosion can have a big impact on that small stream. As you find a cooperating landowner, or as you decide that there's a piece of state property, a section of stream on state property that needs to have some rehabilitation work, you start to do that work, and as other landowners see that, they start to realize, that's a, that's a good project. I want to see that happen on my property, too. Since the early 1990s, projects have included seeding riparian areas next to the stream to filter water and hold back the soil, placing riprap along the stream banks to reduce erosion, adding bank hides to give trout a place to escape from predators, and the installation of fences to keep cattle out of the water. Private contractors do much of the construction, but there are some projects that only happen because of volunteer labor and donated materials. According to the Iowa DNR, anglers make more than half a million trips to Hawkeye State trout streams and inject more than $14 million into Iowa's economy every year. Efforts by landowners, volunteers, and government agencies have helped clean up the water and keep gravel stream beds clear of silt allowing trout to lay their eggs. Those efforts have helped re-establish naturally reproducing trout in more than 40 of Iowa's 105 trout streams. An example of where the cooperation between farmers and government yielded results can be seen at Valley View Farm, where Walter Langland and his son Steve run a diversified grain and livestock operation in rural Winnesheek County. In 1993, the elder Langland started the first of several restoration projects by fencing off the riparian section along North Bear Creek 
to keep the cattle out of the stream. It makes me feel good that uh, someone else can enjoy fishing along a, a stream that has good access to it. Some of Langland's other projects include stream bank restoration, bank hides, and the creation of a parking lot for anglers. Well, this is a century farm. I don't know who is going to carry on it after my wife and I and son are, are gone, but uh, we need to care for the land for the future generations. Not far away, Jason Howe runs Howland Hills Farm in rural Alamakee County. Howe sought help from the DNR more than a decade ago to restore the land along his section of Patterson Creek near Wakan. I was kind of tired of seeing all that good uh, topsoil washed away, and uh, so I had um, went to them and asked about it. And um, you know, I, I think around the same time as when I was wanting to get the trout, to see if I could get the trout to start reproducing, wondering what that would take, and uh, spoke with the DNR about that. And um, most years I'll do one or two. Um, of the worst uh, banks, I guess, to uh, kind of keep them from eroding away. And, and uh, you know, it's been working out pretty good. Howe spent his summer days on the creek when he was young, and his children are continuing the tradition of fishing, swimming, and playing in the water. For Kleckner, just catching the trout tells him things are improving as more soil remains in nearby farm fields and out of the stream. Having a pretty stream with nice rocky banks and all that sort of thing is, is important and that's nice. However, if the farmers don't take care of the 500 or 1,000 acres that they're farming that's in the watershed, uh, pretty stream banks aren't going to help natural reproduction of brown trout. So, I mean, it's all, it's all the farmers taking care of the watershed that, that has allowed us to have natural brown trout reproduction going on here, and, and for me, that's pretty exciting. The ideal of farmers and environmentalists sharing common goals of protecting and enhancing natural resources on which both depend often seems to be elusive these days. But the synergy is evident in northeastern Iowa and could easily have served as the inspiration for Pulitzer Prize-winning author Norman McLean, who once wrote, eventually, all things merge into one, and a river runs through it. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.